Lydia Olet, presenting group for Greenwich TV, your humble host. Welcome. Today in the studio, I have three talented artists. I have Ayo De Fast. Sometimes I don't know how to pronounce your name properly, but yeah, Ayo De Fast. Ayo De First. Ayo De First. That's right. Thank you, Ayo. And I also have Yusuf Jalo here with me. Hey, greetings to you all. Yusuf Jalo. Thank you very much. And I have Ferry. This is the guy that to pronounce your name is so hard for me and I need to get it right. But it's Ferry Shara. It's Ferry Shara. Ferry Shara. Okay. Much. Thank you very much, Ferry Shara. <laughs> okay, now, I know that we're all artists. You're all artists in different fields. That's so right. tell me more about you, um, I'll be first. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I am the first is uh, a performing and visual artist mm -hmm. and then um, um, performing artists in different ways uh, is not only talking drum that I play but the major instrument that I play is called talking drum. Okay, talking drum. Yes. So is this your talking drum? That's right. It's talking drum, right? That's right. Okay, so what does it talk? talk what does it talk? Does it talk your name? Talk. Well, actually, when I, you know, I try to narrate how the drum talk to people. Mm -hmm. The talking drum actually interprets um, languages okay. and it mimics the language and interprets human voices. Mm -hmm. So depending on any language you want to, you know, use your talking drum to, you know, to communicate with people with. You said any language? Any language. Okay, I'm from Kenya. So can you speak a Kenyan language with your talking drum? Perfectly. Okay, go on. Let's hear it. I'm not from Kenya. You need to tell okay. me what to say. You might Jumbo, <laughs> jumbo, jumbo. Wow, that was beautiful. Let's hear that again. Jumbo, jumbo. Wow, that was beautiful. But I can see you have so many different talking drums. The sizes are they all called talking drums, or they have different names? Well, actually, uh, we have different sizes of different talking drums and uh, due to that different sizes they have different names mm -hmm. but they belong to one group mm -hmm. called talking drum mm -hmm. but this is Dondon 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 or Iyailu mother of drum okay but this is the leader okay. yeah okay. because we actually play in ensemble mm -hmm. and uh, this is the leader anybody playing this will be the leader mm -hmm. and then we have people accompanying him mm -hmm. um, we have different uh, uh, percussions. We have aguda. We have a gym, We have omele mm -hmm. We have atele. Mm -hmm. We have gudu gudu, and so on and so forth. Okay, but the different drums. Do they have different sounds, or they all have the same sound? Actually, it's like you and a little girl. Mm -hmm. When you talk, your voice will be deeper okay. than the little one. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the size of the drum depicts the the tone. Mm -hmm that comes out of the drum as you can see this one is bigger than that yes so obviously you know the tone from this mm -hmm. must be different to that okay let's hear jumbo with the little one okay that's fine <laughs> i would like to break actually hear the sound the different sounds i'm doing this mm -hmm. to get it closer to my armpit okay because okay. when you do that you'll be able to get uh, the treble mm. out of it more. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Wow, that is good. So I, well, I wanted to repeat what my drummer just said. Jumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Okay, let's do it again. Jumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Oh, okay, that's nice. You can make everything out of it. Come on. Jumbo, jumbo. You can jumbo. join us. Don't be Charge. <laughs> <laughs> but that was good. Thank you very much. Actually, I am the first, um, um, happened to be the first uh, professional talking drummer in the euro mm -hmm. and the, for, the first talking drummer to have taken uh, talking drum and uh, Yoruba cultural heritage mm. from the local level to the mainstream. Okay. And uh, that have spread it all over internationally mm -hmm. and then um, you know to go be the glory we've taken it to 
Buckingham Palace, you know, from London the Grand Station. Wow. To Buckingham Palace. Wow. So I know you say that you're tying that thing to put it on your on your armpit. Is there a certain way that you need to hold the talking drum for the sound or you can just put it down on the floor and play? Is there a particular way to hold it for the sound to come out? Actually, you know, <clears throat> you have different ways of handling talking drum. Mm. The smaller one is being handled the way I've just showed you. Okay. And uh, the main reason why I roll the strap mm -hmm. is to get it closer to my armpit mm. because you actually play, you know, with your drumstick and the second ha uh, hand, you play from your elbow to your armpit. Okay. If you are playing the smaller one, mm. so if it is too done, so obviously you can look at, you can see now. So it's not closer to my armpit. Yeah. So I will not be able to use the complete strength from my elbow to my armpit. Mm -hmm. So that's the way we handle the talking drum. Okay. And then uh, you put your fingers there, depending on how professional you are. Mm -hmm. You are very professional. Mm -hmm. You can play like three people playing. Okay. And that was what I've, what I've just done. Jumbo. Jumbo, jumbo. jumbo. So I can just play. Okay. I just took on. Mm. But as a professional. Mm -hmm. So you add some spices into it. You add some spices. Right. And the bigger mm -hmm. one, you actually put it on your shoulder like that and then you use your your thumb mm -hmm. go inside the string like that mm -hmm. and then you use the rest of the fingers okay to squeeze the string because okay. this is being played the same way you play your guitar mm. you cannot play your guitar like this just like this pom 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 until you actually do like this pom 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 yes you hold it to give yes. it that sound and uh, the same thing applies to the talking drum so you cannot just keep banging mm. or you say like that so you can make any sense okay. until you actually squeeze the strings mm. on and off wow. yes yeah? okay that's beautiful Yusuf Jalo. I've known you, Yusuf Jalo, for a long time, and mm. I know that um, personally, what I'll say, you're the one of the best storytellers around. Thank so you. tell us more about that. Your storytelling expertise and. Thank you. Well, um, <coughs> yes, um, I am, you know, Yusuf Jalo, um, otherwise uh, AKA the Cowfoot Prince. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a storyteller, I'm a motivator and, a, and um, uh, an educator. Um, I see myself as an architect for social change and cultural awakening. Um, uh, I think that, um, you know, my storytelling uh, works, works right across um, the world at, the, um, at this present moment. But I also think that African storytelling has an incredible role to play to, um, to, to challenging our social status quo, even our political status quo, mm -hmm. as much as um, um, enriching or, shall I say, validating um, the cultures that are within um, Africa itself. Because the stories that we tell informs um, people about the culture that tells that story. So when I tell a Yoruba story about, um, about the creation of the world, um, the, 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 the principles within that story informs us very well about, um, the, the, uh, the, the, about the Yoruba people, their beliefs, their customs, um, their way of life, and so on. And so I take storytelling incredibly important because um, it says in the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with God, and the word um, was God and the word became flesh so word is incredibly powerful and uh, and our people in Africa and in the ancients right across truly understood in fact overstood exactly the power of word so when I'm telling a story when my ancestors from Africa are telling a story they are telling um, they are throwing out a vibration a tone that affects how you think that creates a perception um, for you to, to understand the world within which you live. Storytelling is a healer. Storytelling is creator. You know, the, the whole Bible, the whole Quran is stories. 
the stories that have been told that we mm. believe and that has shaped the way we live our lives. Politicians tell us stories all the time. Many mm. of them lies, but they tell us stories all the time. Um, some of the most powerful storytellers in the world, Hitler, an amazing storyteller. He stands up there and gets God knows how many millions of people believing in their story of white supremacy. Um, so does Churchill, so does Abraham Lincoln, so does uh, Martin Luther King. Powerful, powerful storytellers. And these people are no different from our ancestors in Africa who have told many stories that have affected our lives, you know, um, um, today and, our, and, and, and the way we live our lives today. Okay, wow. Thank you very much for that. So storytelling is, is, is a way of life. Everything we do is based around storytelling. From the time you wake up for, to the time you go to bed, you're either telling a story, doing a story, living a story, or experiencing a story. Or listening to a story. Or listening to a story. Well, well Precisely. Well, so what, at what age did you start telling stories? Oh, Lord. I, I, I mean... Number one, we did African, not just African, but we did storytelling in Sierra Leone, uh, in my village, you know, as a kid, and we just told stories. I remember we would sit down at night, late at night, and we just tell stories. And, and I had friends who would tell stories uh, that just never end. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a friend of mine, Lance, and I who would tell a story called Mr. Jackie Blue. Mm -hmm. This story, we do not know the ending up till now. Mm -hmm. And I was only about six or seven years old at the time. Yeah. Um, we don't know the ending of that story. Mm -hmm. But it was amazing. My grandma told me stories, my grand uncles, my uncles, my aunties. Um, you know, I'd be sitting out in my village, the moon is shining and 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 we, you know usually i usually like to go fishing so my grandma would have got the catfish for me i don't know what you guys call the catfish in, in yoruba land but, but we have this catfish that we call searing and, and we would have that my grandma would fry it because i love fishing you know yeah and my grandma would have gone and, and i've gone fishing and get a few of the catfish and the searing and and gubobo and sianke and tobo and, and my grandma fried them for me and, 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 and then of course you know my uncle sit and then telling me stories yeah. it was the most magical moment mm. my imagination goes wild you know and i was so glad mm. that it was it it wasn't like today where you, you watch a film and 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 the story being told to you there because it seems like they are superimposing pictures to you already of what you should imagine mm. whereas when you've been told this story and um, without any pictures it leaves you a personal story a personal image of you that is only precious to you mm. that remains with you forever 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 mm. that's the those are the images I carry with me mm. um, as I tell my stories right across the world Wow that is beautiful you, with your stories are they traditional stories are they original stories where do you get your stories from are they do you research them tell me more about how you get your stories do you tell the things that your grandma said a long time ago <laughs> Well, definitely, um, I, I tell a lot of stories that have been told to me in the village, and that is one thing I do. I mm. always go back to the roots. Okay. Um, I'm under, you know, I have to get my, my strength always back from the roots. Mm. So, yes, I listen to, I tell stories that my grandmother has told me, that my uncles have told me from when I was four or five years old. But now, um, I, uh, I take those stories, I close them up with... Um, with a fabric that is within the culture within which I find myself. Mm. So if I'm in England now, when I tell the same story that my grandma told me years ago, I would use McDonald's. I would use, you know, um, Bruno Mars songs in them. Um, why? Because um, the stories have got to evolve. They've got to always come alive. They've always got to be current and relevant. That to me is much more important that it's relevant um, where I am. So I use these different mm -hmm. elements, these different cultural um, um, principles or aspects or, or that I find myself in. I use those as a bridge to reach my audience. Then I bring them over mm -hmm. to appreciating my own African um, culture. Wow, that is so awesome. I'll come back to you because I want to know what that musical instrument is, <laughs> but I'll come back to you. Okay, now let's go to Ferry Shari. I, I can't pronounce your name. Forgive me for that. Tell us more about your name. And I know you have that do re mi fa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honor to, to be sitting on the same sofa with these two great African talent. Uh, I am the first and Yusuf Jalo. It's a pleasure to be on the same Thank you very much. sofa Thank you. with you guys. My name is Fei Yishara, which simply means a, a gift for the family and friends. 
and in Yoruba language we have three tonic sulfurs which is just do re mi so every Nigerian word, every Yoruba word has an accent with those three tonic sulfurs on them mine is just do mi re mi fe yi shara and that is the best way to learn any Nigerian word or name I, I am a musician, I sing, uh, my genre um, is a combination of a lot of styles from Lagos mm -hmm. but these days you either call it Yoruba gospel or Juju gospel what that simply means is uh, an am amalgamation of uh, Juju music, church music, mm -hmm. uh, Fuji music, uh, um, Apala a lot of different genres because I grew I was raised I was born and raised in Lagos so I call it Lagos music because mm -hmm. everybody came from all parts of Nigeria to 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 in search of greener pastures so hence we brought our cultures with us I'm originally from Abeokuta and you know I, ne I never slept one day in Abeokuta so I'm, I'm a Lagosian mm -hmm. so Lagos music has become Yoruba gospel and in it you find a lot of um, other, other different styles of music like Fuji, like Juju. But uh, one thing that's guaranteed is if I am singing and performing with my band, I will keep you on the dance floor for as long as possible. <laughs> Thank you. I know that for sure because I've been to one of your events. In fact, I've been to more than one and I was on the dance floor. My feet hurt the next day. Oh, so sorry. I can I can testify to that, sorry. that your music. So just for, for, for everybody else that is listening, so do you classify your music as traditional or um, uh, hip-hop or how do you classify your music? Okay, uh, for starters, uh, uh, you, you should never refer to an African music as mm -hmm. hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop is American. Okay. So I can, my, my music can never be hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Then, I'm, then, I'm, then that means I'm an, I'm, I'm an American. Mm. If I'm an African, my music has to be traditionally African. Okay. So I am a, my music is under the umbrella of traditional Nigerian music. Mm. Mm. And that, that's the real music. Okay. That's the real music. It is indeed. Not the only music, but the real music. It is the real music. <laughs> it's where okay. every other music comes from. Okay. Where every other music comes from. Absolutely. All over the Nigeria. world. Nigeria. Yeah. Well, really? Indeed. Do you want us to argue on that or we should just leave that? Uh, for behind the scenes. <laughs> behind the scenes. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay we we'll leave that one. We'll leave that one. Okay. So when you were growing up, yes. did you have any anybody that you looked up to for the music for your music, inspired you, or you just started on your own? Just one day you thought, mm, I'm going to be a musician. So how did all that happen? Oh no, I mean um, obviously I believe everybody got inspiration from somewhere. Mm. My inspiration uh, originally came from my mother, okay. whose father was a pianist in a part of Yoruba land called Ijebubo. Mm. Uh, he was a pianist for about 50 years before he, he went on to, 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 to be with the Lord. So my, my mother gave us the music mm. through our genes. Mm -hmm. And the, the first person that sort of like introduced me to music properly is my older brother, who, who is the first Nigerian musician in this country. His name is Jide Court. Uh, and that is my big brother and he was for years our choir master in our church and he taught me a lot of the things I started with mm. that I knew from when I was about six because mm. I picked up my first instrument when I was about six uh, yeah. the agogo which is the cowbell mm -hmm. and uh, things went on from there but still to today I still go to him for advice mm -hmm. and he's still my inspiration okay and that's my big brother wow well done so with your musics do you write them? Do you write your music or where do you get your inspiration from when you want to play the music? Um, I have led my band in, in the United Kingdom for 17 years. Okay. Uh, when I started, I started with other people's music, mm. which is uh, how I believe every other people would start. Yeah, that's right. And over the years, I started to write my own songs. Mm -hmm. um, at a point, I told my brother that I, I, I sound a lot like a particular big musician in Nigeria and he said, you've thought that for years but listening to you now you're starting to sound like yourself <laughs> you know and and that was when i thought oh maybe, maybe that's true so i started to believe in my own songs and my own writing so today i write 80 percent of, of the songs i sing wow you know uh, i've just released an album my my debut album yeah can i can i just plug I that have it here. if you don't With mind me. Yeah. this is my debut album uh, that was released august 2013 uh, project started 2008 in Nigeria 
had to go back in 2009 to finish it up. Uh, went to America in 2010 to mix it. Uh, but finally came out 2013. It's downloadable on Amazon. Just type in for each era. There's six tracks on it. Different styles of Lagos music. High life, fast tempo, uh, proper juju. Uh, there's, there's a song for everybody in there. Mm -hmm. you know. And I pride myself in writing songs that uh, are ear friendly. That's what I call my lyrics. They're very ear friendly. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I remember um, uh, uh, when you talking about Juju music, I remember in Sierra Leone as a young man, I used to listen to, you know, um, um, Ebenezer Obe. That's right. I listened to, you know, King Sonia De, right. Sonia Okusun, right. and so on. And what was funny was they had these 12 inch LPs that they were recording yes, in that time. Yes, and this yes. music just seems to go on forever, you know? <laughs> but I heard all of these, these instruments there. Yeah, that's right. But in my head, at that time, I just could not assimilate these in my wow. head. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you why, though, because Freetown was very, was always aiming for Western kind of music. So even though my dad brought this music, but it was all Jim Reeves, there was all these mm -hmm. Western style. Mm -hmm. And they were, of course, three minutes there, four but, minutes there. And so where these ones but, were long. When you come but, to think of it, yes. you just say Freetown. Yes. Majority of the people mm -hmm. living in Sierra Leone. Well, I'll say Freetown. I would not say Sierra Leone. Freetown. Okay, Freetown. <laughs> yes. They are from, you know, Yoruba land. That is definitely yeah. true. But I see, I did not realize this until lately when I've come over to England. Because many of the friends I went to school with were called, you know, Olu, yeah. and then Kayode, right. mm -hmm. and all that this thing. And we had all these secret societies from hunting from Aero yeah. to Egunugu. Egunugu. All of these, we <laughs> have these. We I have believe you have, you have your name as well. Well, you never <laughs> <I> never <laughs> know. <laughs> Maybe you should tell her the Sufi Jalo is Dada, that's not Nigeria. Well, I'm Fulani, and there's a lot of Fulani in Nigeria. I think his Yoruba name is Adebayo. I respect it. Today, I have declared the Sufi Jalo, the cow of its prince, Adebayo. Now, going back to you, Ayo the first. No, but I want to know what I am. Adebayo means, first of all. I want to know. Oh, Adebayo, before you accept the name. Before I accept the name fully. Tell us. Well, Ade is... Anybody bearing the name that starts with A D E, A D, you should know that definitely the the person is from royal family. Wow. So that, that Adebayo, be fine. Carry on, yeah. please. Carry so on. Adebayo is like uh, we just we are, we have arrived, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, celebrate a crown, a new prince that has been born. Mm -hmm. Adebayo. And they buy you. Yes. And then, uh, you know, I carry so the have, cow food prince. Yep, all right. But you know, he's an old prince. The new... He's an old prince that no, Don't forget born. that this name was given to him when, when he, was he was born. born. Ah. But he didn't know. I okay. just, you know, reminded him. I thought it was okay. <laughs> I like, I like that story. It works for me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, really, it's really funny because um, interesting, I would say. It's yeah. interesting and it's, it's really, really nice as Africans because all our names actually have meanings yeah, yeah, and very 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 strong meaning that's behind right. it that's like right. you just say that any name that starts with a d e that's right it's from royalty yeah. so even if it's adewole because i've had somebody called yes. Ade, Ade, Ade Ade yes. yes. so a d e just from a royal family that's, that's right. right wow that is beautiful yeah and, and i know somebody as well called that ching and that ching means sun and that's those something involved in the um, bath when the child was born right. yeah there's, there's really something Anyway, going back to you now, yes, about your talking drum. Back to your talking drum. Tell us where does this talk, talking drum come from? Is he is it specifically from one country or is all over Africa you can find talking drum? Well, actually, uh, when you really go deep, deep down uh, to the history of talking drum, you are talking of um, the country like Senegal, mm -hmm. Mali, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's actually uh, spread to Nigeria and to the northern part of Nigeria mm -hmm. before it actually, you know, came to the uh, southwest Yoruba, um, country, I mean Yoruba zone. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing, one particular thing about Yoruba people. We are very, very 
rich in culture. Mm. Now, when it actually spread, I mean, came down to Yoruba land, now the Yoruba people then, they actually embellished everything mm. by using it because the other people using talking drums, you know, they just use it to, you know, make the sound, mm -hmm. just the rhythms. But when it, the Yoruba people then embellished it by using it to call names, to praise people, to welcome people, mm -hmm. to abuse people. Mm. Yes. Because if I'm at loggerhead with, you know, Yusuf or Fei, mm. I would not say anything to them verbally. But I used my talking drum to abuse them. Mm. You know? So basically, wow. when in the olden days, there wasn't any means of uh, media. Mm. Call it, uh, mention it, uh, the news, uh, newspapers or television stations. Then, when the queens and the kings had messages for their people, what they used to do is to call a talking drummer mm. and the uh, town crier mm -hmm. to go to the town center or to the top of the mountain and broadcast the news to the people. Mm. So then, so lately, I then say to people, talking drum was the BBC of the time. Oh, those times. That's right. Those time. okay. That's right. Wow. Like musicians, sometimes they use, a lot of people use platforms or pulpits to send messages to people, That's whether right. it's good or bad. Yeah. So you use it. And, 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 you know, like I said, you know, you use it to welcome people. Yeah. If any VIP mention it, mm -hmm. it is coming, you know, uh, to Yoruba land or even over here it has happened. I don't know if you want to know about that. Yeah. You know, the, the major instrument that you use to welcome them, to show them how important the person is, mm. is talking drum. Okay. So how do you actually make this talking drum? How do, how do you make it? How do well, you that talking drum is actually made of wood. Wood, okay. Yes. A wood that is being cut down to a particular size mm -hmm. and carved to a particular shape okay. with hollow inside. Mm -hmm. When it's being cut down like this, so the carved you know the sides to that shape shape mm -hmm. and they make hollow inside mm -hmm. and they make hollow inside. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you play from here, it travels wow. through the hollow <laughs> and comes out there. Yes. I'm going to show you something now and mm -hmm. I'll ask Yusuf to put his arm okay. oh, on on that face. Okay. allow the sound to vibrate no, 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 no. when you close it it actually travels mm. the sound travels from there to there, to there. wow that is, so can anybody make it or you have special people doing it no we have special people doing it so actually when it's being carved mm. with the hollow inside then it's, it's very funny to me when the westernized uh, westernized people came out with the idea of recycling mm. because recycling has been going on in Africa for thousands of years exactly when it's been you know when it's ready to be made then we our forefathers they used to uh, make use of the dead animal skins okay instead of just allowing the animal to get rotten away mm -hmm. they will remove the skin mm -hmm. and then process it mm -hmm. To be for the face, mm -hmm. the faces, mm -hmm. and the string. This is made of antelope skin. Wow. And this is made of made of uh, goat skin. Goat okay. Skin. Okay. So that's when the wood is ready. Mm -hmm. Then you put, you know, the processed animal skin, mm -hmm. you know, on the sides mm -hmm. and on the faces. Okay. So I know you said antelope. Must it be antelope? Can it be any other animal skin, or it has to be antelope on the ropes? It could be goats. Okay. But because you need this one to be kind of solid, okay, you know, thick, solid, mm, strong. Mm, mm, mm. So we we you know we use antelope skin most of the time. Okay, but you can use goat skin as well. As well. Yeah. What about the sides? I know you said cow, but can you use any other skin as well? Or no, you use goat skin. Or goat skin. Ram skin. Ram. Or other animals that you know 
little babies that fit us mm. so yeah we use fitters as well ah okay mm. wow that's beautiful yeah. okay now moving on to yusuf jalo i know i've noticed that you have a nice instrument there so tell us more about your instrument uh this instrument is the congoma mm -hmm. the congoma is a is a family of um it's a family of instruments that are made using a gourd um what in english you'll call a gourd mm -hmm. in Af in west africa we'll say calabash uh, yeah and this is a calabash. Mm -hmm. um, a calabash is the largest fruit in the world. And, um, <clears throat> and it's used for, goodness, so many different purposes. We use it to make the kora. Mm -hmm. We use it to make, um, of course, calabashes that we use to wash our rice. And when the calabash is big enough, we use it as a suitcase. Mm -hmm. And among us, the, um, the Fulani people will use a calabash for wedding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in England, they'll go with this ring I did with. Among the Fulani people, if you go, you give them a ring, they throw it back at your face and get on to <laughs> what is your problem. You have to come with a calabash. Mm -hmm. The secret mm -hmm. is what's in the calabash. Okay. Because well, you have gold. You have expensive clothes oh, wow. and shoes and all. That's what you take to the in-laws, not this ring, ring business. What ah. is that thing? No, you take those things in there. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten times you take it, they said it's not enough. You mm -hmm. have to bring more. Mm -hmm. So if you're a smart guy, you start from the pound shop and then you build your <laughs> way. <laughs> pound shop. But, um, okay, yeah. yeah, but it's played with, um, <clears throat> it's played uh, um, using these, um, um, metals here these are hacks or blades but we have trimmed them down so that they're not they've lost all the sharp edges um with them originally they used we used to use bamboo and um because the bamboos would break okay. so um somebody invented hacks or blades we said amen and these are just um pick up mics to amplify mm, the sound the we we'll play it with a ring um, that's why I carry this ring all the time. Mm -hmm. And then usually I'll have a bell on my foot as well, which um, it's inside the Kongoma at the moment, but because I've not put it on my foot. Okay. But um, the Kongoma is like a blues type of instrument. And, um, and, and, and in the village, when we would play it usually, I remember um, my uncles would have had a few kegs of palm wine. And um, with a few kegs of palm wine, their eyesight is very, very fantastic. They're singing in six and fours. And they'll sit down and they'll just sing songs, you know. Since you're from Kenya, let me see. when you play that music on its own mm -hmm. and then the talking drum comes in and then you know when you put the two together look at how it was beautiful and this Absolutely. wasn't even rehearsed so <laughs> as an artist you have to be always on your feet ready oh, action but that's what, ready. That, was what, that is what talking drum does mm. to any music it talks any to any music any, yeah, it's, it's compatible with any music yeah you know like you know it does never any way or anyhow he can go on stage without mm. talking drum mm. Mm. Oh, wow. but he needs that talking drummer mm. yes. you know to complement put all this everything yeah to so, spice it to spice it up yeah. that's put right. some <laughs> roy on it and some you know mm -hmm. maggie that's right <laughs> <laughs> okay um do you play any other instrument i um i i picked up the, the drums when i was about eight mm. so uh, as a drummer i was uh I'll say I was very I had a successful career as a drummer. Mm. I um, 
I I started well I, I got paid for playing drums mm -hmm. the first time when I was 14 wow and then my first uh, professional band that, that I worked with in Nigeria I joined in 1989 as a gentleman called Lagwaja covers his face I was his first drummer you know and then I came here in 93 I worked a lot with um, uh, Joyful Noise promotion. Mm. So working the Jazz Cafe, Smolenskis on the Strand, Royal Festival Hall. I toured with uh, the South African Gospel Singers as a drummer, um, and I've done so many albums as a drummer. I've played on so many albums mm -hmm. to, to 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 my credit, but I haven't played drums actively for about ten years now. And people wow. are telling me go back to playing drums. Yes, you know, sing no problem. But you know, your your drumming was good in, in those days, and I said okay, I would. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and go back to practicing, yes. and uh, because that's my passion, I love mm, drumming. Mm. But I'm learning to play the piano now as well. So oh wow, that is good. Hopefully, uh, that should turn out well after wow. some 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 few months of, of learning. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. So this question is just to all of us now. As an African artist in the UK, what is what are the um, challenges that you face as an African artist in the UK? Let me start with you. What are the difficulties? Well, lots of challenges actually. Because um, you know it's very difficult to convince people to accept your own cultures, mm. you know, and then. Um, but one very good thing about Africans or African musicians is that we believe in ourselves, mm. and no matter how difficult it is out there for people to appreciate you, you do not relent. You carry on in striving. No, I faced a lot of challenges, you know, like long time ago, there was a day I was completely, you know, broke. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I've never stolen a penny mm -hmm. and I will never steal. Mm -hmm. And I went to uh, London Underground, Balam Station, and I was playing my talking drum to earn money. People were dropping money, they loved the way I was playing. <laughs> I left there, then I went to Tooting Broadway, and as I started playing, you know, the security just came. What? It's making noise. You know, it just drove me out of the station. Mm. So that was a challenge. Mm. But I did not relent. And so many challenges, I cannot mention mm. everything mm. to you now. Okay. But thank God, like I said earlier on, because I did not relent from London Underground Station. To Buckingham Palace. Well done, well done. Okay, Yusuf, yeah. um, just on the, on the same topic about yeah, I think, uh, difficulties. I, I think definitely I agree with um, with with I on the first here. Mm. Um, validation is is um, is one of our biggest challenges. Mm. Um, we find ourselves here always trying to um, to get validation from the outside. I mean as in from other cultures as opposed and to getting, right? yeah, getting mm. validation or recognition from our own, mm -hmm. which would just make it so much easier. But that is a big issue and that issue itself goes down to the to other issues to do with identity and then if we begin to go there then we begin to go into all other, all other socio political things mm. which we don't have time to go into right now. But um but definitely that's a challenge. The, the, there's another challenge of um, of actually figuring out how to make a living um, in doing what we're doing. Mm. But I think one biggest challenge we actually face um, as artists uh, for coming from Africa to come here is, um, is understanding how this system operates. Because when you don't understand how this system operates, you will find it so hard to make a living. Um, you know, there's, there's many laws that are put um, there, A, to help you, to protect your intellectual property, and that word in alone, many African artists do not know a word like that. Mm. Intellectual property, what does it really mean? You know, the Igbo people, they get anything they say, it's an intellectual property. Mm. They wrap it up, there's a lawyer who will write long, 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 long words, grammar. and practice and say, this is grammar. If you mm. touch that thing, it will disturb you, mm. and so on. So. You know, we, we play music and we don't get the royalties mm. um, that we deserve for our music. Mm. Um, I mean, this is changing now, but these are changing. serious challenges mm. that we still are facing. Mm. Wow. 
Go on intellectual property. Yeah, so something like um, intellectual property rights, many African artists do not know what that really means. Mm. Many many African artists do not know that when you get your material, you need to go and register it. I mm. think it's called the, P, uh, the PPI, for example, mm. or something like you need to go and register so that if your music is sold on mm. iTunes, wherever, once it's registered, you will always get your royalties. Yes. Many people don't even know things like this when you write your songs and so on. Mm. So. You know, as I said, it's improving. I mean, I got screwed by um, uh, what's the what's the group called now? Um, uh, we, we did a track which went number one in New Zealand, number one Australia, number two, uh, number one in America, number two here, and it was Michael Jackson's song that beat this, this song, which mm. was with KLF. Mm. We called Justified and Ancient was the track, and we did it with late Tammy Wynette. They only paid me two hundred and fifty pounds. Wow! Mm. And that song made millions. Because I did not understand the law, I did mm. not understand what it really meant. Mm. And my name is in the album, I did back vocals, I arranged the music for them, and so on, and I choreographed dance, everything. Mm. Wow. So these are serious yeah. challenges because mm. we do have to think about legacy. Yes. Um, and that's welfare legacy, financial legacy for our children that mm. come after us. Mm. What do we leave for, um, for them? What institution do we leave for our children who want to become artists mm. so that they can come on top of what we have laid and they can just build on it as opposed to them going out again to and looking and to start all over yeah. again. Yeah. These are challenges mm. that we have got to overcome as artists. Okay, what about Faye moving on? Um, cha challenges, um, <clears throat> adding on to what my two older brothers have just said, um, the, the challenges we faced, and when I say we, my, my brother and I, uh, in the early 90s, forming a Nigerian band, mainstream, apart from playing in church, mm -hmm. was recruiting members of the band, pe trying to make people believe in your vision, where you're going, and understanding that when you start a business or when you start a dream, money doesn't come straight away. Mm -hmm. It takes a while. Um, that was a challenge, and um, that affected quite a lot of people. That discouraged a lot of people when people will not turn up on time mm -hmm. or people will think I'm the only one that's available to play that instrument there's no substitute so I'll come late and there's nothing you can do hmm. uh, but uh, 20 something years after I have I have cornered find a way around that what mm -hmm. I do now is recruit young Nigerians that were born here and teach them how to play the instrument I want them to play yeah. uh, number one they grow up in an environment where they respect time mm -hmm. they understand uh, a lot of things I need to explain to somebody that's, that's come from Africa to live here, they understand already. They say, Uncle, don't, you don't need to tell me there's no money now. I understand that when we get gigs. So those are the kind of challenges uh, we faced back in the days, but mm. that's changing now. I recruit, I mentor, whilst I'm teaching them, I'm paying them for, for, for the job. And there are a lot of young Nigerian mm. musicians now that play the traditional music, which wasn't the norm 10, 12, 15 years ago. Wow. wow. Yeah. You know, so, so, that's, that's so we are moving really and appreciating yeah. our roots yeah. and yeah. culture. Yeah. Okay. It is. So tell me more about yourself now. If, we, if anybody wanted to contact you, tell me more about yourself now. So tell me about your gigs you've done. If you have any other gigs that are lined up, we can come and watch it, come and support you. If we need to find you, where do we find you? Okay, uh, first place to find me is www.feyishara.com F-E-Y-I-S-A-R-A.com That's my website. Um, info at feyishara.com as well. That's, a, that's my email. I, I am a... The, the, the main place we perform now is private functions, you know. Uh, so I do a lot of private functions all over the world. But we do do concerts. I'm sure if you log on to the website, you, you'll be updated. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, Yusuf Jallo, tell me more about yourself now as Yusuf. Any other gigs that you've done, the gigs you've done uh, previously, if there's any other gig pending. I know there's one on Friday, which I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and how we can contact you as well if anybody wanted some storytelling. Yes, um, it's easy to contact me. My name again, Yusifu Jalo. I know many people go with a Y. Mm -hmm. No, mine is a U S I F U mm -hmm. Jalo. Jalo is spelled J A L L O H. So it is yusifujalo.com. Um, that's my website. Uh, my 
um, once you go to my website the rest just follows you in terms of um, gigs that I'm doing this Friday I am performing at um, SOAS um, School of African and Oriental Studies which is up in Russell Square and then um, uh, but my next gig is actually up in Oxford um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually doing a play read um, of a play which I wrote, um, Sweet Peter. Mm. So it's been read up there and it's um, going to be performed at um, Oxford Playhouse. Um, uh, but th then after that, I'm off to um, other countries. Some other countries <laughs> <think somewhere>. so. <laughs> so I really am not so much here. But I do a lot of school work. I do a lot of education work for schools. Yeah, work so works. people can always contact me for um, school work. work. Yes, okay. precisely. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Are you the fast? Or you say, I young the fast? I young the fast. The fast. Uh -huh. the fast. Uh -huh. Tell me, do you have any gig spending? Or if we want to we want to contact you, some talking drum? Well, like I say, it's not only talking drum, you know. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us more. Anyway, because I've got a cultural um, group mm -hmm. that showcases a lot of cultural entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work within the educational <coughs> sectors. I work you know, I deliver a lot of projects, you know, with the boroughs, the council, and I work in schools mm -hmm. as well. And um, I've got so many gigs coming up. Mm -hmm. There's one this Friday mm -hmm. at uh, Lambeth, um, the Lambeth, one. the mayor one. So I'm going to be performing there. <laughs> and uh, after that, um, when we get to March, it's going to be kind of busy. Mm -hmm. I've got so many gigs coming up. I'm going to Paris as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you just want to contact me. And uh, well, before I go, I had my events last year, which was launched on mm -hmm. the 23rd of August last year. It's more, the first of it, uh, its kind that collaborates um, other African music together. That f it, it was a fusion of African cultural heritage. That will be coming in September as well. But if you want to contact me, just go on Google or YouTube and type in A Y A N space it then D E F I R S T A Y A N D E F I R S T on Google or YouTube. That will take you to my website and you get all the contact there. Or Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, mm. Twitter. All of them. Everything. And that's just name. And if we go to okay, yeah. so I just wanted to point out, which I actually forgot to mention, is that mm. I do um, storytelling um, radio program um, okay. every Sunday. Osibisa. Yes, on Osibisa Radio. Okay. So if people do, um, they can. It's an internet radio station, so people can tune in mm -hmm. um, and watch it from six o'clock. Um, every evening on Sunday, every Sunday evening rather, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Fantastic, fantastic uh, mm. um, time and I'm bringing in many, many guests and of course I can't wait to have these two on board with me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's for CBSA Radio, for CBSA right? Radio and okay. it's with CBSAradio.com. Okay. And that's it. Okay, so with my wonderful artists today, thank you very much everybody for thank you for having us. This, uh, thank you for invitation. Us. Thank you for and uh, anybody who wants their services, you can go on their individual websites and you'll get all the information, all the workshops, dates that are coming up. You'll get everything that we want to know. Okay, now what I've learned today is story. When you leave your house, you're telling a story, whatever you're doing outside, you're telling a story. And now, just to ask you out there. If somebody was to write your story and you sit back and somebody is reading back your story to you, what would you, would you be happy? Will you smile? Would you like what you're, what, you're, what you're hearing or you're listening to? So remember, your life is a story. Uh, write a nice story about yourself. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for coming. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Nigeria. Aye. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for having us. My name is Anion the First. People are there always tuning in and watch Greenwich TV. I am Yusuf Jalo, the Cowfoot Prince. Tune in on Royal Greenwich TV. This is Feisha, the African yeah. entertainer. I live in this borough, Greenwich, the best royal borough in the all of the United Kingdom. Tune in to Royal Greenwich TV. Don't touch the da. Later.